TVP number 136, Legal Interstices, Are You Exempted from Tyranny, a Vani Classic. In this episode of the Vani Podcast, we revisit the topic of legal interstices and another article by former uh, TVP co-host Kyle Reardon. And uh, while this may not all be practical, relevant advice, uh, it should at least get you thinking in the direction of uh, ways to increase your personal freedom by exploiting already existing loopholes uh, within the law. Uh, if you'd like to read this article uh, or download the audio, view the video, whatever, uh, you can visit vanupodcast.com forward slash 136. Quote, those comparatively few law students of those comparatively few law schools who do learn to recognize the great gap between worldly problems and legal principles and to no, do not later fall prey to the propaganda of the trade they are practicing and forget all they once knew can become extremely useful citizens. They've been trained to look at every legal problem as, it re- as, as what it really is a practical problem, and the adjustment of men's affairs. They have been taught how to throw aside the entangling trappings of legal language in seeking a fair and reasonable and workable solution, and then having found such a solution, how to wrap it up again in respectable legal clothes and work for it in terms of principles of law. In short, they have learned how to treat the whole of the law as a technique, as a means to an end, as pleading and procedure, and more than that, they have learned something woefully rare among uh, among the modern medicine man, They have learned to concentrate on the ends, which is the practical solution of a human problem, instead of on the means, which is the law. End quote. Fred Rodell. Legal interstices, briefly defined, are gray areas within the law that can be used to violate the spirit of the law while simultaneously keeping the letter of the law. A rules lawyer can engage in the sharp practice of exploiting legal technicalities in order to game the system so as to uh, advantageously benefit himself or his clients. This legal opportunism can be frequently observed by the variety of constitutional interpretive schemes, as well as the malicious compliance observable in many corporate workplaces. These gaps in the law can take the form of either loopholes or lacunae. The former relies upon ambiguously vague or inadequately phrased laws, where circumvention is still possible, whereas the latter is the sheer absence of a law. A non-liquette is preferable by those who'd rather not quibble about interpretations of laws because the law is silent about a particular topic as opposed to individuals who read law that relish the chance to exploit loopholes through verbal jujitsu, uh, such as lit- uh, litigation. Throughout the 1960s, Rayo disliked the reliance some folks placed upon legal interstices. As he said, quote, To some, deception and concealment seem so difficult or unpleasant that they often said for liberance, playing legal interstices, while remaining otherwise conventional and visible. For uh, myself, I'm not especially interested in liberance, partly because millions of people are already playing those games for all they are worth. I don't believe I could come up with gimmicks much better than what thousands of tax lawyers, accountants, draft advisors, etc. are doing. And legal interstices are transitory. As quickly as many people discover a dodge, the bludge move in to close it. Of course, a particular Vanu, uh, Vanu way may not offer permanent security either. There will be new detection and counter-detection techniques. But once Venuans get below the noise level of environmental change caused by animals, weather, and or non-Venuans, the bludge and their detectives will, uh, will be at the point of diminishing returns. In the short term, certain forms of liberants have their attractions and are worth using, but I, I believe Vanu has greater long-range potential." End quote. The bludge was Rayo's term for government agents collectively, and police officers specifically, as in bludgeoning someone, yet that is beside the point. He was illustrating how loopholes and lacunae alike were foundationally unstable. The experience of the SLV Just Us homesteaders in Castilla County last year, during 2015, appears to reinforce this observation of his, although how would anyone explain the stability of the famous gun show loophole? Regardless, I think Rayo is correct for pointing out that individuals ought to not become too dependent upon legal interstices in order to secure their liberty. Just as important as what legal interstices are, are what they are not. Civil disobedience is the practice of clearly breaking the government's monopoly laws, albeit unjust ones. This, by definition, is unquestionably illegal. Political crusading, also known as reformism, is fundamentally distinguished from legal interstices in that while both of them are forms of working inside of the system, reformism seeks to change the laws, which is noticeably dissimilar from legal interstices, that circumvent or avoid the laws currently in place. Unfortunately, all this may sound rather abstract, so I think some examples of legal interstices are in order so as to make them more concrete. Rayo mentioned that, quote, The price of living in a van is some submission to the bludge. Maintaining a driver's license, paying attention to the legalities of parking in a particular area, etc. While in the van we are, in large part, enjoying liberty, legal interstices, not vanu. 
I mean, laws and their interpretations often change, end quote. Although the question of carefully calculated submission ought to be explored on its own merits, what I will mention here in transitory passing is that the infringements against the right to travel does make, in, does make an individual more vulnerable to coercion, despite the fact that being a van dweller presents opportunities to exploit loopholes or otherwise benefit from lacunae in other ways, like squatting on public lands. He continues, quote, Vanu and liberty intergrade, as almost all concepts in the humanities. How about someone working as an independent contractor rather than as an employee in America to avoid tax withholding? Superficially, he seems to depend on legal loopholes, liberty. But tax withholding from independent contractors would be difficult to enforce, so he enjoys Vanu too. Two confidants who trade in secret are clearly Vanu. On the other hand, employment with a non-profit corporation, which presently is required to collect social and security taxes, is only a use of liberty, end quote. Obviously, the relationship between legal technicalities and vulnerability to coercion is quite profound. Using interstices to reduce vulnerability is so self-evident that even Rayo begrudgingly acknowledged its value as such, but distinguishing out exemptions from vulnerabilities highlights the differences between legality and practicality. In other words, a legal exemption from being coerced, interstice, is not the same as a practical and vulnerability to being coerced, which is Vanu. He is correct in saying again that dependency upon interstices ultimately relies on what the current political climate of any given moment. So as a strategic matter, interstices might be better conceived of as a rearguard element that you can fall back on, as opposed to a, pr a, pr a practical frontline effort. For example, this would be the difference between search warrants versus home hardening. Whether coercion takes the form of compulsory registration or socialized retirement, Rayo always maintained that it's better to exercise Vanu rather than solely rely upon interstices. As a stopgap mitigation, legal interstices may have their role to play in the cause for liberty, and from what I can tell, any reliance upon them does not validate the government's legitimacy because they are used to directly undermine the government's use of lawfare against the American citizenry. Until Americans are willing to throw off the yoke of oppression by this police state, the tyranny of the administrative agencies will continue unabated. Keep in mind what Frederick Bastiat had to say about liberty itself. Now, after having vainly inflicted upon these social bodies so many systems, let them end where they ought to have begun. Reject all systems and try liberty. Liberty, which is an act of faith in God and in his work. End quote. You've just heard TVP number 136, Legal Interstices, Are You Exempted from Tyranny? A Vanu classic originally published back in 2017 by former TVP co-host uh, Kyle Reardon. If you'd like to uh, read, watch, um, or download this podcast, just visit vanupodcast.com forward slash 136. And uh, for more information on legal interstices, uh, please do check out episode four of the podcast, vanupodcast.com forward slash four, uh, or just scroll on up uh, in, your, uh, in your favorite podcatcher. Uh, thanks so much for your time today, and always remember, Vanu is yours for the making.